Hi friends, welcome to my channel VLSI Lab. In this session, we will discuss about uh, APB protocol. APB stands for Advanced Peripheral Bus Protocol. It is uh, It comes under the family of AMBA protocol. So before going into the detail about the APB protocol, I request you to subscribe to my channel if you are watching for the first time. So without wasting the time, let's get started. So friends, Many times we come across this protocol. So first of all, let us try to understand what is a protocol. Protocol, like we have two devices, device one and device two. Both these devices want to communicate or uh, communicate with each other. Communicate means transmit data from one device to the another and second to the first, vice versa, right? So they should follow certain rules. So protocol is nothing but a, a set of rules that is agreed by both the communicating parties. It is a set of rules which both the devices or both the parties agree to follow. So like that, we have this APB, Advanced Peripheral Bus. The main advantage of this Advanced Peripheral Bus is it is a low bandwidth, low cost and uh, easy to use protocol. Okay, so it also belongs to the advanced microcontroller bus architecture where we have the other um, protocols uh, in this family are like we have AXI, advanced extensible bus architecture and we have AHB, ASB or other uh, protocols. So in this session, we will be discussing only about the APB. So AMBA specification standard is used for designing high level embedded microcontrollers. So microcontrollers use this AMBA bus uh, standard. So we must know what is APB and all this thing, kind of this stuff. Okay, then it uh, provides technology independence and to increase modular system design. So it is not technology dependent, it is technology independent. It strongly encourages the development of reusable peripheral devices while minimizing the silicon infrastructure we all know that if we are able to reuse the peripheral device then it is easy to minimize the silicon infrastructure okay so this is a little background about the amba and the now like this is our soc where you have a high performance arm processor and uh, we have a processor arm processor is there then we have a high bandwidth on-chip RAM, then external memory. These are all high bandwidth. You can note that these are all high bandwidth. So APB is only used for low bandwidth, low peripheral devices, okay? So it is also very low cost. So these are all, you can see, they are mainly connected through AHB or AXI. Most of the peripheral industries are nowadays using AXI. So Mostly you will see that this high performance, high bandwidth uh, are connected through AXI or AHB. Now we have certain low peripherals, low bandwidth peripherals like UR, timer, PIO, keypad. So these kind of the low bandwidth peripherals are connected through APB, advanced peripheral bus. Because our APB is a low, per, uh, low bandwidth um, Peripheral, okay. Protocol, communication protocol. So friends, let us see in detail about this protocol, how it works and how we can use it, okay. So APB protocol is a part of AMBA protocol family developed by ARM, ARM processors. So it is a part of that protocol family as we have already discussed. It is a low cost interface. It is a low cost interface that is optimized for minimal power consumption. This is one of the main advantage of APB. That is it is low cost as well as it is low power consumption. APB interface to any peripherals that are low bandwidth. So you can, you can uh, connect any peripheral which requires low bandwidth okay like the we have seen earlier like keypad pio timer which we can connect to the um, apb and we can communicate between the apb devices right 
Now, APB has an unpipeline protocol. Means each transfer takes at least two clock cycle. It is not like one process is going on and you are putting the another part into the process. So one after the another. So it's like a non-pipeline or unpipelined uh, protocol. Okay. So these are all the basic information about the APB protocol. Now this uh, AMBA uh, APB, suppose we have a master and the APB slip. So any device which is initiating the transfer is called a master and the one which is responding to that initiation request is a slip. Okay. So um, these are the APB devices. Now we have certain signals in APB that is P clock, P C L K. This is the system clock signal. Okay. Then P A D D R that is address bus signal. P W data. This is the write data bus signal. P R data read data. Enable signal. P enable. All are using. We are having or uh, for all this signal P as a suffix indicating it is a APB signal. Okay. Then we have P write write signal. P select peripheral select signal. Like we can have a one master and a one slave, single master and single slave. Or we can have a single master and multiple slaves or multiple masters, sing multiple slaves also. So if we have suppose a single master and multiple slaves, that time uh, we need to select which uh, peripheral or which slave is to be connected and to which the master wants to transmit or receive the data from. So that time this peripheral select signal is used to indicate which sele peripheral is selected. Okay, then ready. Ready signal uh, indicates the end of the current transition. Okay, then slave P slave error. If there is an error in the transmission, then this signal is given by the uh, slave to the master indicating that the transfer was not accurate. Okay, then P rod. P rod signal is uh, like you have the APB protocol with uh, secure and non-secure. These are available in higher versions of APB. P strobe signal is also available in higher versions of APB. This P strobe is like um, you can transmit the data in a um, like a byte wise. Okay. So these are these description about the APB signal. Now we will see how our master looks like and what the signal direction is in this diagram. Okay, so any device which is initiating the transmission uh, that is called a master. Okay, so here what is required when our data is to be when the communication is to be established between a master and the slave, that time what we require is the P address. So the master initiates the transaction. So P address, P write, and PW data are all sent by master to the slave. And on the other side, what the master gets from the slave, that is read data, okay? So this is the PR data, that is the read data and P slave error. If there is any error, that time it will also get the input as a mm, error signal that indicates that the previous transaction failed, okay? So these P select one, select two are the select signals connected to the different slaves. Okay, as we have discussed, if we have a single master and multiple slaves, so that time what we can do is then this many uh, select signals we will have, and whoever the slave is to be transmitted is to be connected to the master, that slave's P select will be uh, asserted. Okay, similarly for this slave, these are all the input signals and only one signal that is PR data, read data. When the slave is transmitting data to the master, that time this read data will come to the master. There is one more signal here it is not shown. That is slave error. As I said, if there is a failure in the transmission, that time this signal is sent to the master indicating the previous transaction is failed. Right. And you can see here, these are normal signals only. P clock, reset signal, PW data, write data from the master to the slave. This is like a write enable write and read enable when this write is one that time it is a write transaction 
when the slave wants to transmit that time this is made as zero then it is a retransmission right then uh, here this is the address this is p enable enable okay so here we have certain states i will explain in the next part of this video so these are very important signal p select and p enable are very important for transmission of one state to the another state okay so these are about the master and slave so now we will come to the operating states these are the three operating states what are these idle state setup state and access state three states idle setup and access so in idle state what happens is p select is zero okay there is no select signal so master is not selected any slave okay so when there is and this is when this happens when there is no transfer when there is a transfer that time the select signal is one okay when the select signal is one but if the p enable signal is zero then it is called the setup phase okay so it is i'll give you an example it's like when you are meeting your friend for the after some days so what you do you say hi first then whatever the message you have that you convey immediately by seeing the face of your friend you directly will not tell whatever you want to say okay you will uh, some greet sometime and then the actual conversation starts here also it is like a setup we are setting the um, phase this is in this phase we are setting so that for the next state we can transmit the data so in the setup state you have p select is one but p enable is zero many times in the interview it is asked that uh, p select is one p enable is zero which state it indicates so it indicates setup and for the idle p select is zero even p enable is zero all uh, signals are at the their reset values okay then here then uh, the next if the transfer is still there then what will happen after this it moves to the uh, it moves to the access phase in the next clock cycle okay so in this part what happens is here you can see that the access uh, in the access phase your uh, select signal is one and you are p enable is also one both of them are one so here the actual transmission of data takes place between the master and the slave so once this is uh, so this access phase is continued until p ready signal is asserted to one okay when the p ready signal is one that time only you can exit from this access phase okay so here you can see that the moon how long this p ready is zero you will stay in the access stage only so when the transmission is completed for this particular uh, part then what will happen the p ready is one so the p ready has two option either to go directly to the idle state when there is no further transfer required okay when there is no further transfer of data is required so it will move to the idle state or if you have further transfer then it will go again to the setup state okay so setup state so there you have already selected the slave so you can again continue with the transmission of data So this is how our APB works. So when uh, like during the transition from setup to access, the remaining signals like we have seen PW data, then uh, P write and uh, other signals, PW data, P write. And if there is a protection, then P prot. All these signals should be stable. They should not change. Well, whatever the values they are holding that they should hold during this entire transmission okay during this entire transition from setup to access and within the access states so what there should not be any change in this signals so this is all about the apb in very uh, not in much detail but a little idea i want to give about the apb so this is how i tried uh, i hope this video will definitely help you in understanding the A apb protocol in an easier way so that's it for the this session
Thanks for watching and please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.